Do you wish that all things wealth and finance were much easier to understand and not presented by a bunch of beige cardigan wearing geeks? Welcome to the Clever Investor Podcast, where we're dishing up the easiest to understand finance program served in bite sized chunks so your brain will thank you as your knowledge grows. Hosted by the brilliant Owen Taylor, a multiple award winning expert with a glorious knack for explaining the complex world of wealth in the simplest of ways. Hey, clever investors, and welcome to another show. Property investment is a significant financial decision that requires very careful consideration and analysis. Engaging in thorough research before making any investment decision, I think most people understand, is something that you need to do. But we live in the Instagram generation. If you have an itch, we can scratch it so much easier nowadays. You can jump online any day of the week and there are literally tens of thousands of properties for sale in Australia. Why use research? Why not just buy something that's in the budget that you've got or in the price figure that you want and put a tenant into it? Joining me today is the founder and CEO of Blue Wealth Property, Dr. Tony Hayek, and I have a question to put to you. What is the importance of using research to find an investment property? Uh, That's a great question. I think uh, probably before we talk about the importance of research, we need to distinguish the difference between research and research. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, um, what most people do is they uh, they jump online. uh, And I always use the example of my shoulder. You know, many years ago I tore my shoulder uh, and uh, I went and saw an expert about what had happened and how I was going to fix it and then he fixed it. And uh, fortunately for me, it all went pretty well. And the alternative to that was I could have jumped on Google, maybe uh, checked out a couple of YouTube videos about how to potentially repair my own shoulder. Yeah. So I'm pretty pretty positive that wouldn't have gone well. Uh, I know that's a pretty extreme example, but uh, I think it's one that highlights a really important point. And that point is that although uh, there's a lot of information out there, uh, reading and uh, watching videos for me doesn't necessarily amount to what we would call research. For us, the research that we're conducting is on the back of an independently audited research methodology. It was developed by me and uh, a few others a few years ago, uh, 15 odd years ago. And I have a PhD, so... Uh, I know how to research. I know what confounding variables that affect data are. I understand the way data is distributed. You know, many years ago there was an eastern suburb of Sydney that had grown five or six hundred percent in one quarter, mm. and everybody was wondering what had happened. And because there are not many properties sold in that suburb, and it's a very little suburb, what had happened is that the median had moved right up because the properties that were sold in that quarter were were at the expensive end. And um, but people saw that as uh, huge property growth in that suburb. And so what that highlights generally is that a lot of the times people don't really know what they're looking for when they're researching. And by the time they've conducted their version of research, they end up being paralysed by too much information. You know, ah, we paralysis talk. by analysis. That's the one. So... Paralysis by analysis is actually a pretty real thing. You know, we find a lot of people that uh, that end up reading too much and watching too much end up being the people that are least likely to make a decision. In fact, they're, they're less likely to make a decision than someone who has absolutely no information. Mm. Yeah. And so uh, my, my recommendation has always been over the years to identify somebody who can conduct the research, research in a controlled manner who has a history of uh, delivering on the back of that research and lean on that in order to help you to make decisions. So generally, uh, if you find the right expert in whatever industry you're after, their ability to find things and look for things in the research, in the data, is far superior to the layperson. 
Yeah, half the time when you're looking for, you, you know, you're researching stuff, you don't even know what you're looking for. You don't know what you don't know mm. is probably a really good line. And so research is critical, and particularly for property investment, Owen, because uh, it's a pretty significant decision. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you're not buying the wrong dishwasher or the wrong coffee machine or, you know, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of investment that ultimately will decide how well you retire, how much you leave for your children, what kinds of holidays you go on, what where you live. It's a pretty significant decision and, and utilising the expertise of someone who knows how to research better than you know how to research is probably pretty wise. Now it's time for a little word from today's podcast sponsor. Blue Wealth Property is the go-to hub for property investment education events. Whether you're a first-time property investor wanting to learn to invest in property or an experienced investor wanting to expand your portfolio, we have an education event to suit your curiosities and your needs. If you're new to investing and aren't sure if it's the right financial choice or you just don't know where to get started, our Wealth Through Property event is perfect for you. Our team of friendly experts host all our events and they've been in your shoes before. They're there to answer your questions and guide you through the property investment process, no matter what your experience level. Upcoming Wealth to Property events. The 14th of June, live in Sydney's Sutherland Shire at the Sharks Carilla. On the 29th of June, it's live in Sydney CBD at the Hilton Hotel on George Street. On the 5th of July, it goes to Sydney's northern beaches at the DY RSL. All events are open for registration from 6.30pm and start at 7pm, going for 90 minutes, with question and answer time after every single event. Go to bluewell.com.au and book your spot now. For most Australians, their experience of buying property is when they're buying their own or occupied property. You and I have been presenting this information apart and together for many years and we both talk about the uh, when you're buying an owner-occupied property, it's it's an emotional decision, as it should be. Yep. It's where you want to raise yep. your family yep. and, and, and all of this. Absolutely. So tell us about removing the emotion, though, from buying an investment property. How does, how does research help you remove the emotion? Well, I always try and uh, help people distinguish the difference, you know, by treating uh, or telling people, recommending people uh, treat property investment like a business. Yeah, it's ultimately a bit, it's ultimately about num- numbers. Yeah. So when you're buying an investment property, you're buying an investment property based on the research in a particular location. You know, what is happening with infrastructure? What is happening with population growth? What is happening? What is the balance or imbalance between supply and demand? What is is this uh, property that I want to invest in suitable for the demographic or the growth of the demographic or the shift of the demographic in that particular area? Uh, does the property uh, return uh, a rental yield that is appropriate for me to be able to hold this property for the long term? Uh-huh. Will there be a market of purchases come exit strategy time? Yeah, time for me to sell and to realise my profit. So these are all key factors. At no point do you think, oh, what is the view out of the kitchen like? (laughs) Because uh, that is what you consider when you're going to move in there, where you're going to live there. I I, I almost these days try and avoid uh, visiting the properties I own for fear of uh, applying my own emotional judgment to them. You know, I don't like that colour scheme and, you know, why is the sink here? The dishwasher should be on the other side of the kitchen or whatever it might be based on the way I use things or I live. And that's not necessarily always the right thing because I'm buying a property that is almost as generic as possible so that I can open as much uh, as much as possible the number of buyers who will want to buy it come exit strategy time, come time for me to sell. So it's a completely different methodology. When I'm buying my home, I'm considering the size of my family, the age of my children, are my ageing parents going to live with me, does it need two bedrooms, three bedrooms, do we work from home? Does it need a study? How many cars do we need park? Is there off-street parking? What about the backyard? Do we use it? Do we not use it? And so on. So many variables and they're all emotional and they're all very specific to our family needs. 
And, and very rarely do we consider factors like exit strategy or, ye- or rental yield or quick because they're not really that important at that time. Mm. But an investment property is a completely different proposition. I always say it's like comparing an apple to an elephant. <laughs> yeah, they're completely different concepts of, of decision making. You don't go and buy a florist because you like flowers. Yeah, <laughs> You buy a florist based on its uh, revenue, its profitability, uh, its target market, about the consistency of the of of uh, the um, the owner's ability to sell flowers, the the contracts they might have. You know, maybe they're selling flowers into the local RSL club. So these are the decisions you would make to buy the florist because it's a numbers game. It's a business. You don't buy it because they sell your favourite flowers. Yeah? So that's the difference between uh, your home and your investment property. In summary. You don't need research to buy a property, but you can do so much better by embracing it, being open to it. And I think the struggle for a lot of people is it's just different. Yeah, it is. And, and, and you know, a lot of it, a, a lot of it is about your own individual needs, uh, not from an emotional perspective, but from an investment perspective. Yeah? Um, start with the end in mind. Yeah, what is it you want to try and achieve? How much can you afford? What is your borrowing capacity? What's your cash flow look like? How much super do you have? How old are you? When do you plan to retire? You know, all of those factors that are key to making good, in inverted commas, business decisions. Yeah. And so the research on the property is important, but so is the uh, research on your own set of circumstances and then how you match a well-researched property to those numbers. That's a key yeah, factor. That is absolutely a key factor because I always say, you know, even the best property in the country can send you broke if you can't afford it. And the affordability shouldn't be worked out by you as well. It should be worked out by you and your mortgage broker absolutely. and your financial advisor if you if you have a need and want one as absolutely. well. So I, the- I can honestly say that um, my mortgage broker uh, has been over more than two decades now. Uh, the difference between me having... Uh, an average number of properties and a well above average number of properties because your ability to have somebody in your corner who can understand how to get you the money that you need to leverage into a bigger portfolio is absolutely critical. Now, some people are only ever going to buy one or two properties, investment properties in their life. But if you have the right advice from the right mortgage broker and the right research around the properties you're buying, someone who potentially may have only bought two may end up buying four or five. And that's a life-changing difference. Because, again, they're doing the research for you. Correct. Thank you. That was um, fantastic. It's always good to listen to you. Thank you again for coming in today. We'll get you back again some other time soon. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please hit the like button, tell your friends and your family about it, and we'll see you again next week for another edition of the Clever Investor Podcast. You have been listening to the Clever Investor Podcast, proudly sponsored this week by Blue Wealth Property. Are you ready to start a new investment journey? Get in touch with the industry leaders. Blue Wealth Property. Blue Wealth have a proven track record in using research to identify growth markets. And Blue Wealth have supported thousands of Australians to buy the right property in the right market at the right time. Go to bluewealth.com.au.